Welcome to the next lecture in trigonometry. We are focused on section 1.3, trigonometric functions. Today we're going to look at the Pythagorean theorem and the distance formula and how that can help us define specifically the trigonometric functions and then um, values of trigonometric functions as it pertains to quadrantal angles that we talked about in the earlier sections. So first let's define some um, values here. If we let x, y be a point other than the origin on the terminal side of an angle in standard position. Now remember a standard position angle has the positive x-axis as its initial side. And now here we're going to define a point x, y. You can see it here as point P. That is going to define the line from the origin to that point to be our terminal side of the angle, and so thus we get this angle theta, if you will. So angle theta is in standard position because we start at the x-axis and rotate around counterclockwise until the terminal side, which is the line from the origin through the point x, y. Okay. Notice that the distance from the point p to the origin um, is equal to this value of r that we define. And notice, because this is a right triangle, we can use Pythagorean's theorem. x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So r would equal the square root of x squared plus um, y squared. Okay. We're going to use these measures, x and y. Now, remember, uh, because this point is x and y, this means it's x units away from the origin here, so that's why this side is x units long and this side is y units tall. Okay? If we use those measures of x, y, and r, we can then define the six trigonometric functions of theta. The first one is sine. Sine is our first trig function. The sine of theta equals the distance of y divided by r. The cosine of theta equals the distance of x over r. The cotan, excuse me, the tangent of theta, these are all abbreviations, sine, cosine, and tangent. Um, these are what you'll see on your calculator. The tangent of theta equals the distance of y over x. We now have reciprocals of these. Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. You can see that its value is r over y. Of course, y cannot be equal to 0 um, because then it will be undefined. The reciprocal function of cosine is secant and this is equal to r over x. And finally, we have cotangent, the reciprocal of tangent, which is x over y. Later on, we're going to give you some, like some uh, little song, if you will, or sayings to remember these formulas. But right now, you need to remember these. Specifically, sine is y over r, cosine is x over r, and tangent is y over x. Make sure you put those in your notes right now. Hit pause if you need to. And then you have to remember that these other three functions, cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, secant, reciprocal of cosine, and cotangent, reciprocal of tangent. So let's try to do a problem and find these values. We're going to do several problems so you get a little practice here. The terminal side of angle theta in standard position passes through the point 815. Find the six values, excuse me, find the values of the six trig functions of angle theta. So if we draw this, we can see that x is 8, y is a 17, and again, we can measure these sides out. Um, if it go, the terminal side goes from the origin through this point, 8, 15, so the height of the triangle is 15, the y value, the width of the triangle is um, the x value, or 8, and, and we create that triangle by dropping a perpendicular down to um, the x-axis, which allows us to have a right triangle and then use Pythagorean's theorem 
to find that r is going to equal 17. And there's the math there. I'm not going to walk through that. 8 squared plus 15 squared and take the square root. Okay? Now that we have these three values, 8, 15, and 17 for x, y, and r um, respectively, now it's just plugging those into the formulas that we know. For example, sine is y over r, so 15 over 17. Cosine is x over r, so 8 over 17. Tangent is y over x, so 15 over 7. Sorry, 15 over 8. And then we have the reciprocal functions cosecant, secant, and cotangent. Okay? So again, what we're doing is we're using um, the point that the terminal side of the angle goes through. We're using that x and y value to calculate the um, distance from the origin to the point using Pythagorean's theorem, x squared plus y squared and take the square root. And then we're simply plugging in these values into the ratios based upon the formulas that are here and, and hopefully now in your notes. Okay, so let's try another one. The terminal side of angle theta in standard position passes through the point negative 3, negative 4. Find the values of the six trig functions of angle theta. Here I've drawn this again. Um, here we have um, negative 3, negative 4. So the measure of, of the side, um, the, the width of the triangle is negative 3, and the depth of the triangle, or the height, is negative 4. Okay? If we, again, use Pythagorean's theorem, we get that r equals 5. The square of negative 3 squared plus negative 4 squared, um, all taking the square root. Now, with these three values, once again, notice here we need to use, instead of thinking of this as simply the uh, length of a side, and typically when we're measuring distances, we always use absolute values. But when we're talking about trig and we're talking about um, on the grid here, we're going to use the polarity of the x and the y. This is very important to use the polarity of the x and the y. So we don't use 3 and 4, we use negative 3 and negative 4 because that was the x and y value of our point. So now we just plug in those values. Uh, sine equals y over r, cosine equals x over r, tangent equals y over x, and then of course again we have the three reciprocal functions, cosecant of sine, secant of cosine, and cotangent. Okay, I went through that one a little bit fast, um, but this is our second example that we've done. All right. And you can always pause and listen uh, or rewind and listen again. So what happens when we have, um, instead of given a point, we're given a line. What if the terminal side of theta is defined by the value or by the line x plus 2y equals 0? This is also telling us that, um, that x has to be greater than or equal to 0. And when you think about the grid, the Cartesian system, the graph system, the xy graph grid, you know, this means that we're either in quadrant one or quadrant two. So we need to figure out a point and we need to pick a value of x and then calculate a value of y. So we just need to find a point on this line and we're given the fact that x has to be greater than or equal to zero. So we just pick an arbitrary value of x. So let's choose x equals two. Okay, that way we, you know, uh, we're going to take a multiple, you know, an even multiple of x or, or an even value of x so that we can uh, make sure that y is an integer value as well. So if we choose x equals 2, we plug this in, x plus 2y equals 0, which gives us 2 plus 2y equals 0. And now we can calculate the value of y so that we can find the point on the terminal side of the angle and then just do our calculations like we did in the previous two examples. So 2y equals negative 2, which gives us y equals negative 1. So now we have our point, which is 2, negative 1. Based upon this, we can find the value of, our, of r. Okay, 2 squared plus negative 1 squared equals the square root of 5. And so here we can see the graph with our point. 
our x value, our y value, and our r value. Okay. Based upon these, we can now find all of the measures of uh, the trig functions. Okay. Sine is y over r, which is negative 1 over the square root of 5. Here, in order to um, simplify this, we need to rationalize the denominator. We need to multiply by square root of 5 over square root of 5. And we get negative square root of 5 over 5. With the cosine, we're going to have to do the same thing because we get x over r, which is 2 over the square root of 5. And again, we need to multiply by square root of 5 over 5. Tangent is negative 1 half. And then, of course, we're going to go ahead and do our three um, reciprocal functions that we can see here. Oops, sorry. I went a little fast there. Sorry about that. Um, you can always... Um, page back or rewind just a little bit. <clears throat> what if we have a quadrantal angle? And here we have an example of an angle of 90 degrees. So here our x value is going to be 0, and we can really pick any y value. The easiest one, of course, is to pick 1. Always pick smaller values because they're easier to calculate. So let's, um, in terms of r, the r distance is going to be, since um, x is 0, we get 0 squared plus 1 squared is 1, and the square root of 1 is 1, so we get r equals 1 as well. So in this case, we have x equals 0, y equals 1, and r equals 1. Okay? For sine, we have um, y over r. For cosine, we have x over r, which gives us 0. And for tangent, we have um, x, excuse me, y over x, which tells us it's going to be undefined because we cannot divide by 0, okay? And then, of course, we have the reciprocals. The reciprocal of 1 is 1. Here, we have undefined because the reciprocal of 0 is going to be undefined. And then the reciprocal of an undefined one here, we have 0, okay? So here, we didn't have a point, but we were told it was 90 degrees, and we knew that at 90 degrees, this is along the y-axis, a quadrantal, and the x value would always be 0, and then we can pick any y value along here. It won't matter because the angle will be the same. Okay. What if we do this um, for, we have another quadrantal here, the point was given to us, it's negative 3, 0, which happens to be a 180 degree angle, okay? You go through the same thing, negative 3 squared is um, 9, plus 0 squared is still 9, the square root of 9 is 3, so um, x equals negative 3, y equals 0, and r will equal positive 3. Again, we're going to go through and do our ratios of sine, cosine, tangent, and then our reciprocals, and we can see here that in this case, for 180 degree angles, the cosecant and cotangent are undefined. All right, the cosecant and cotangent are undefined. So if we're looking at uh, quadrantal angles, um, if the terminal side of the quadrantal lies along the y-axis, this would be 90 degrees or 270, then the tangent and secant functions are undefined. If the terminal side of the quadrantal lies along the x-axis, this would be 180 or 360, then the cotangent and cosecant functions are undefined. And here's a table that describes all those values. Um, you know, I'm not a big fan of memorizing tables or even memorizing that pattern from before. If you use it a lot, you know, your memory will start to build on that. To me, it's more important to memorize the function and how to find those values. Um, this way you can always calculate the values. You don't, you're not relying on your memory and then, you know, maybe confusing, you know, which one is undefined and which one is zero. So as long as you know the relationship, the proportional functional values, x over r, et cetera, for each of the trig functions, to me you're in a better shape at that point. <clears throat> you can also use a calculator. On your calculator you have... Um, sine, cosine, and, and tangent functions. And so you can find the values of quadrantal ang angles um, using those trig function keys. 
Now it's important for you to use um, the, the, your calculator is set in degree mode. Throughout this course, sometimes we'll be using degrees, sometimes we'll be using radians, and radians will come later. So you got to make sure that your calculator value um, for angles. Oh man, my calculator's not working. <clears throat> there we go. And this is under the mode button, which is right next to the blue second button. Uh, make sure that your calculator is set for um, degrees, um, not radians, at least at this point. And later on, we're going to talk about that. But throughout this course, it's important that you pay attention to whether you're in degrees or radians. One of the most common errors involving calculators and trig occurs when the calculator is set for radian rather than degree or vice versa, as we'll learn later.